If you got a lot of copying and pasting to do, as an example in Microsoft Word, either within the same document or to another document, like you go ahead and select your text here, and in Word, you can right click on it to go down the shortcut menu to select copy, or you can come up here on the home tab in the clipboard group and click on copy, as you can see in the pop up. You can also use the shortcut keys, control C, and then once you do that, you go ahead and click off, open up another document. And you can use the shortcut keys as well to paste, which is control V as in Victor. There you go. I don't know about you, but after five times, my pinky and my index finger, they're going to get tired. So what I recommend using is what I use is the auto hotkey program. It allows me to assign, as in, in this example, the F1 key to copy. So I can just go ahead and select my text, hit F1, it copies it, and then the F2 key to paste. Sounds simple and fun? Of course it does. So let's go ahead and install the Auto Hotkey program to do that. Let's come down below and open up. I've got Firefox, whatever browser you have. Open it up, and hey, there's my website. Quick plug. I've got my Microsoft Office training videos on DVD and also on download. But if you want to access it on a device that, well, doesn't have a DVD and you don't want to mess with downloads, just have it online anytime that you've got internet connection, go ahead and contact me, and I've got some special offers and codes where you can go ahead and purchase my online anytime training videos for a really good price. In any case, there's my plug. Let's come up here and I'm going to clear that out, the search field, and type in auto hotkey. Hit enter. And it's right here, but down below, Wikipedia has something to say about it. It says the auto hotkey is a free open source custom scripting language for Microsoft Windows initially aimed at providing easy keyboard shortcuts or hotkeys. Well, that's what we want. In any case, you can come up here and, well, there you go. There's the download. But make sure that it's from autohotkey.com. Okay, we're good. Let's go ahead and click on Download. And then come up here and click on Download Auto Hotkey Installer. And then I'm going to save it. And it's going to put it up here in Firefox with the arrow saying, hey, that's where it's stored. Click on it. And I've already downloaded it once, so, well, let's go ahead and click on this to install it. It says, are you sure? Of course I am. Now, I'm going to do the custom installation because, let me select it, it gives me the option to choose 64-bit as opposed to the default because what type of system you have, your operating system, if it's a 64-bit, it's going to be faster. But if you install 64-bit on a 32-bit system, compiled scripts won't run as fast. And so to find out what type of operating system you have, a 64 or 32-bit, well, for Windows 7, come down below, click on the Start button, and come up and right-click on Computer. Go down to Properties, and you can see mine right there, System Type, 64-bit. Great. Let me go ahead and close out, and choose 64-bit. I'm going to leave that alone, click Next, and leave the defaults checked, and click Install. That's it. Let me go ahead, the program's installed, close out, close out, and we're back to our document. But before I can go ahead and use this program, i got to tell the program what functions I want to assign to what keys, like the copy for the F1, the paste for the F2. So let me go ahead and minimize that down to the taskbar. And what I want to do is I want to open up Notepad, and in Notepad, type in a very basic script for the auto hotkey program. So let's go ahead and click on the Start button, open up Notepad. And this is very simplistic. Look out. Here we go. F1 colon colon send comma. And then hold down the Shift key and hit 6. And you get that, well, some people refer to that as a carrot, a roof, an angle pointing up. In any case, go ahead and hit Shift 6 so you can get that. I'll call it the roof, the little arrow pointing up and then type in C. Hit enter. Let me finish this off. F2, colon, colon, send, comma. Let's do that again. Shift 6, the arrow pointing up, and then do V. So those arrows pointing up represents the control key. Remember, control C to copy, control V as in Victor to paste. So it's saying for the F1 key, go ahead and send the command to do the control C when I hit the F1 key to copy, and then, of course, the F2 to control V as in Victor to paste. Now, here's a bonus. Let's go ahead and do F3, colon, colon, send, and type in. That's right. You can actually type in whatever text that when you hit the F3 key, it's going to be so totally tinsel. It'll actually type that in and enter it in. 
So in addition to copying and pasting, if you got text that's going to be repeated over and over again, you don't want to type it in, type it in as an F3 key and go ahead and repeat the process for F4 if you need something for an F4 key, F5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And let's go ahead and come up here and save it. Click on File, go down to Save As, and let's delete the file name and type in our name, My Spiffy Hotkeys, because everything we do here at Dreamforce is spiffy. And then what I want to do is I want to change the extension. As you can see down below, the type is going to be a document, and then it's got a .txt. The .txt is known as the extension of the name, extending beyond the name here. It tells the operating system what program to open up this file in, and I don't want it to open up in Notepad. I want it to open up in the Auto Hotkey program. So what I need to do up here is to add the dot and type in AHK. So let me go ahead and click Save. And let me go ahead and close out, and there it is. Oh, that's so spiffy. All we have to do now is to go ahead and double click on it to actually execute on the code in there for the auto hotkey program. So double click. Once you do that, down below on the status bar, over where we've got our hidden icons, well, you can see it next to it, it's got my spiffy hotkey active. So when I restore Microsoft Word, or you've got folders where you want to go ahead and select a file and copy it, you don't have to do control C, it's already in the hotkey F1. So if I come up here and I select here's some text, oh, let me get it right there, and hit F1, it copied. How do you know? Well, let's go ahead and hit enter, hit F2, paste, hit F2, F2, F2. Oh, isn't that fun? That's so cool. That's not cool. That is totally F3 tinsel. In any case, let's go ahead and minimize this down to the taskbar and to be able to close the program, well, let's go to the show hidden icons, expand it as right there. You can right click on it and exit it, and it stopped. That way, you can go ahead and use like the F2 key in this example to rename. So when I select this and I hit F2, the hotkey isn't active, so it's not going to go ahead and paste. It's going to instead do a rename. So it selects the name, except the extension there, and allows me to go ahead and copy it. And I can't use the F1 key because, again, the script here isn't running in the background. If you're like me, every time I log in, I want this to automatically load up for me so I don't have to, well, double click on it, especially if I don't want this file taking up valuable real estate right smack in the middle of my screen or even off to the side. If I could put it in a folder and have it out of sight, what I can do, instead of opening up the folder to find it to double click on it to activate it, I instead could come down here, click on the start button, and I want to do a search for task, there it is, task scheduler right there. Go ahead and click on it, and come up here, click on Action, and I want to create a task. Click on it, and the name of the task is to run, to run my Spiffy Auto Hotkey script when I log on. So that's the name of it. I can, well, keep the name short and actually write the description down below. In any case, it's up to you. And then the trigger. What's the trigger? Let's go ahead and click on New. And I can begin it, well, I don't want to do on schedule, I want to do it at log on or at start up. Let's do at log on, that's easy for me. And it can be for anybody who logs in to this computer when they log on, or it could be for a specific user, like I have several other usernames that I have that I log under on this computer. So I can go ahead and select that and change the user. Let's go ahead and do the specific, and we'll keep it for this user training. And then go ahead and click OK. So when it logs on, what do you want it to do? What's the action? So go ahead and click on the Actions tab, click on New, and there you go. The action is to start a program. Well, where's the script for the program that you want to run? Well, that's on our desktop. Click on Browse, and it's right there, my spiffy hotkeys. Double-click to select it so the address is pointing right to it. Now, if you move it and you put it like in a folder, when it runs this task, every time you log on, it won't find it, so it won't run the script for the program. Click OK, click OK, and that's it. So every time you log on, it's going to run it. And then, of course, to go ahead and delete it, let's come down here. And, well, i got quite a few here. And let me hover in between the two column headers till I can see arrows pointing in opposite directions. Click and drag. And there's the huge name. 
run my spiffy auto hotkey script when I log on. Go ahead and select it. And you can right click on it and delete it and say yes. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.